in a lot of ways, 22 is another year of rebuilding, and it's going to be choppy. We're, we, we, you know, it's not just uh, hiring. You've got supply chain issues. And, but we are setting ourselves up perfectly for 2023. We've got aircraft coming. We will get staffed, I have no doubt. We, we had a goal to hire 5,000 this fall. We are right at 4,000, so we're making significant progress. We, you, you know, if you think about it, you shut the airline down, basically, uh, when the pandemic hits and the business is down 98%. So we shut the hiring machine down. We, re, we uh, spent a lot of time rebuilding that, and we will get there. So I'm very proud of our folks, very proud of our folks. And we're, and we're making very good progress. Yeah, as Bob said, we've already hired 4,000 here in the second half of this year, and we want to hire double that next year. And I, we're both confident we can do that. Um, we're just going to have to be a little patient. It's Talk just to me about take the plans time. for next year beyond just the hiring. Talk to me about the planes as well. I believe there's an order with Boeing. There's something north of 100, 114 right. aircraft. Is that too big a plan? Given the issues at Boeing, the issues you have just hiring people, the issues they have delivering some of the planes at the moment, is that too big a plan? Well, no. Uh, I think we've got a lot of flexibility, first of all. We could take 114 airplanes and retire more than we have planned right now. But in the end, we'll operate in a number of aircraft that matches the staffing that we have available to us. We'll certainly have more staffing as time goes by than we have right now. We'll be able to add flights next year. Um, we may ground some airplanes uh, temporarily. We might uh, retire some uh, more aggressively. But in any event, we have a lot of flexibility. And it's still cost uh, effective for us to take all the 114 airplanes, even if we have some airplanes uh, that are sitting on the right. ground. But certainly, as Bob said, by 2023, we'll, be, we'll want all those airplanes and we'll be in a great position to serve uh, our customers. When you speak to the analyst community right now, you've heard from them, you've spoken to investors, cost seems to be the number one issue that I keep seeing. This from UBS, continued cost creep. You've seen that from a lot of analysts this week. But what do you say back to that, just on the cost issue, where people are unconvinced about your ability to manage them in, in this environment? I, 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 it's really two things to me. We had our investor day earlier this week, and we talked about costs being up 8 to 12 percent. But that's over 2019. And you've had inflation every year since 2019. So you're, you're really looking to ring out maybe 4 to 5 percent of cost. A lot of that is just temporary. We, we uh, as Gary mentioned, we're underutilizing the assets right now, whether that's airports, it's aircraft. Uh, we, we will get back to our historic efficiencies le uh, levels in 2018, 2019. So to me, it's just all temporary. Can we discuss the balance sheet as well? I feel like that's not part of the discussion when it comes to Southwest enough. It's strong. Investment grade at two out of the three credit rating agencies. Do you think there's an opportunity there to utilize the balance sheet a little bit more? Do you think there yeah, is gap? All, all, all the credit agencies. So, yeah, oh yeah, I, I don't think it is uh, emphasized enough. And I think people are missing uh, a lot. We're perfectly situated for this environment. Uh, you've got business travel down, but very strong consumer travel. And um, the business model that we have, which is low cost and low fare, uh, we're not moving away from. Uh, we'll, we'll double down on our efforts, in fact, to make sure that we maintain that uh, business model going forward. We came into the pandemic with a very strong balance sheet. Right. It's it arguably our net debt position is stronger today than it was then. Yeah. So uh, uh, we're low cost, we've got a low fare brand, we have tremendous growth opportunities and a very strong balance sheet uh, and north of $15 billion in cash on hand. So we're very, very well positioned here.